Outlast Trials is a first-person horror survival video game, which is the third installment in the Outlast series. If you're looking to have a perfect start in the game as a complete beginner, or maybe you want to start the game with little bit of knowledge firsthand, this video is all that you will ever need to get the best out of Outlast Trials. As you play the game, you earn experience points by completing challenges, and this increases your therapy level. When you reach level 2, you unlock special items called rigs that will help you a lot in the trials. There are four types of rigs, stun, heal, x-ray, and blind. You can even buy and upgrade these rigs to make them more effective. You can use up to four different rigs, each serving a unique ability that can be useful in different situations. For example, x-ray enhances stealth, blind helps with escaping, and stun temporarily incapacitates enemies. To get a rig, you need to find Cornelius Noakes in the facility area. He offers a choice of four rigs, each with a valuable perk. However, you need rechargers, which can be found in lockers and cabinets, to continue using the abilities. Resourcefulness is really, really important in the game. You have to strategically use items like batteries and antidotes to gain experience points and potentially achieve a grade. Empty bottles and bricks can be used against enemies to earn more XP. However, the carrying capacity is limited to three items, excluding your rake, so you need to carefully choose items based on your unlocked abilities. For beginners, focus on health, batteries, and antidotes as health will help you survive encounters with enemies, including the Skinner Man, while batteries are crucial for sustaining night vision in dark environments. The game also involves dealing with psychosis caused by hallucinogenic gas and encounters with the pusher enemy. Your character's sanity, represented by three green bars, decreases when exposed to these elements, leading to full psychosis and the appearance of the Skinner Man. To stay sane, you have to find antidotes, which are crucial for survival. It's smart to use them early, even during partial psychosis, as full psychosis is temporary. Partial psychosis persists until cured, but using antidotes provides a clearer experience and reduces the risk of permanent hallucinations. As you explore the game, you'll discover various items like medicine, batteries, antidotes, and ray chargers. Among these, the lockpick is also important because it lets you open locked containers on the map. The rig rechargers, which are crucial for keeping your suits functional, are usually found in metal lockers and secured blue cabinets. You'll need to use your lockpicking skills to access them. If you fail to pick a lock, it affects your character's sanity. So, it's a good idea to always have a lockpick with you because locked containers often have valuable items, such as medicines and large batteries. Occasionally, you might find a skeleton key, which is an unbreakable lockpick that lets you instantly open any container. Though keep in mind that the main challenge in the game is failing to pick locks negatively which impacts your character's sanity, hence it's important to be good at lockpicking. During a trial in the courthouse, Markov makes your equipment stop working at certain points to make the experience more challenging. After passing a certain point, your gear won't work until you leave that area. Be careful with doors because some have traps that can alert enemies or make you feel disoriented if you open them too quickly. To avoid this, open doors slowly or find and disable the trap device near the entrance. There are even traps on doors that shoot spikes and release hallucinogenic gases. However, you can find ways to avoid these traps. Watch out for enemies patrolling the area, and if you're caught without any throwable items, you become defenseless. Broken glass and noise traps can also reveal your location, alerting enemies nearby. The best advice is to pay attention to your surroundings to escape without alerting threats, as this affects your overall score. If you have a stun rig, you can strategically place traps outside restricted areas to create a safe spot in case of trouble. If an enemy is chasing you, lead them into a trap to buy time for a safe escape. In each level, there are hiding spots like lockers where you can stay quietly hidden until the danger is gone. If you see an enemy close by but they haven't seen you, use hiding spots but be careful when peeking out, as enemies can notice you if they're close. Walk quietly by crouching down to make less noise, and only run when you really have to escape. If an enemy is chasing you, the best way out is to close doors behind you to slow them down and give you some extra time to think strategically. It's important to slam the doors shut instead of closing them slowly to keep the advantage, even though it makes noise. Regular doors slow enemies down a bit, but locked doors give you more time to figure things out. After closing a door, look for a latch in the top left corner of the frame and lock it by interacting with it. 
Locked doors aren't impossible to break through, but they give you a good amount of time to get away or find a hiding spot. Be on the lookout for more complex traps, such as doors with a red light release gas that affects your sanity. You can disarm these traps by opening the door while crouched or slowly opening it from the other side, and you'll get a new battery for your night vision goggles. In tough parts of the game, especially when there are lots of enemies, it can be hard to stay alive. If you don't have the X-ray rig, you can still find enemies by using live painting, which shows where they are. Screamers are enemies that stun you with loud screams, but you can distract them by throwing things. When you're facing enemies, try to use their weaknesses against them. Many enemies have a hard time seeing in the dark, so you can try to lose them that way. But the Night Hunter, who can see in the dark with night vision goggles, needs a different strategy. The best way out of this is that you can lead them into the light to blind them and create a chance to escape. It's important to deal with specific types of enemies in different ways. Pushers, for example, are tough for solo players because they can cause psychosis. Remember, you need to think strategically and use the weaknesses of your enemies to stay alive in tough situations. Staying alive is super important, and for that you have to pay close attention to the sounds around you. Even if you can't see enemies, you can hear them talking or moving if you listen carefully. The main downside is that the game doesn't have a traditional indicator to show if enemies are aware of you. Instead, it gives you audio signals. For instance, if you hear a chime, it clearly means that the enemies have noticed you. To avoid accidentally bumping into enemies, use the audio cues to understand what's happening around you. All enemies, especially Leland Coyle and Mother Gooseberry, make noise, like footsteps or taunts, so you can tell where they are. Listen for another important sound that is heartbeat. If you hear it, it means an enemy is close, even if they haven't seen you. Take this as a signal to hide or leave the area, which will improve your chances of staying safe from the dangers in the game to a great extent. While you can play alone, teaming up with friends or other players significantly increases your chances of doing well in the game. Though you can use a microphone to talk to your team, but if you don't have one, the game provides shortcuts like highlighting spots or signaling items. To join a team, you can press tab to see your character and three potential team members. You can quickly add someone to your group by pressing the plus sign. Alternatively, you can use the S key to open the socials menu in the terminal, where you can see everyone in the lobby and your past teammates. If you're looking for a group, you can press Group Finder in the terminal menu, and the game will help you find the extra players needed or a full group of four. I hope this list of tips help you when just starting in the Outlast Trials. If you've got any tips you'd like pass along, share it with us in the comments. While you're here, be sure to check out beginner guides for other video games. One of your favorite games might be there too. For everything else gaming, keep it here. I'll see you all in the next video.